Portsmouth are a certified fallen giant in English football. Once upon a time, they were English champions, but they haven't tasted top flight football since 2010. In fact, right now, they're playing League One football. Now, granted, they are doing quite well this year, but me, I want to take them one step further. And I'm going to do this by becoming their new manager for the foreseeable future. Not only am I going to get Pompey from League One to the Premier League, I'm going to make them the world's best club. So here is the default team I've loaded into with Portsmouth. And let me tell you, whilst on paper it doesn't look like much, believe me, there's a lot of potential there. I mean, for starters, you got striker Christian Sadie. He's only 21 years old. Granted, he's only 64 rated, but something tells me with the right development plan, he could turn into a little bit of a monster. There is also Abu Kamara, who is on loan to us right now, but he's only 19 years old, 63 overall. I'm smelling a little bit of a hidden gem with this guy. And of course, Alex Robertson, the Australian international. He is currently on loan to us just like Kamara, but he's only 20, 65 rated, and I've turned this guy into a monster before, and I want to again in this save. And on top of that, there's only one player in the entire squad who's 30 years old or above, man. I'm really liking the looks of this Portsmouth team already. But the budget we've got isn't exactly amazing. We only have 3 million to spend in season one, but you know what? We're going to have to make it work. But tactically, I'm not going to change a damn thing when it comes to the formation. The 4 2 3 1 wide looks to me like it's pretty solid for Portsmouth. But this time, I'm going to use wing play. We've got a couple of really solid wingers in our team, and I feel like we've got to try and utilize them as much as possible. And after meddling with the team a little bit, this, before we make any transfers, is the starting 11 I'm comfortable in going to season one with. And I've just realized we've got two center midfielders in this team, so we may actually change the formation to the 4 3 3 attacking version. Now, as we've established, we've got 3 million in the budget to spend in season one, but I'm not going to bother trying to sign plays from other teams. I've got something else in mind. We've got four players currently on loan to us right now, three of which are from Premier League sides, and I reckon that definitely bodes well in our chances on bringing them in on a permanent deal. But I'll be honest, I'm not too keen on Part Harris from Brentford. He's 20, 63 rated, granted. He may have a decent future, but I don't feel like he's going to fit my plans. And the same applies to Tino and Joran from Chelsea. Granted, he's 21 years old and 66 rated, but I've got a different plan for the attacking midfielder role. I want to bring in Alex Robertson instead of Tino and Joran. I mean, he's only one overall less. He's one year younger and he's 100 grand less than him. I mean, realistically, guys, in a year's time, with the right plan, he's definitely going to overtake Anjorin anyway, ain't he? And that just leaves Abu Kamara from Norwich. I mean, he's 19. Granted, he's 63 overall. What I'm going to do is convert him to a left winger and, quite frankly, just hope for the best. And for the total amount of 2.2 million, we've signed Abu Kamara and also Alex Robertson on five-year deals at Portsmouth. And in case you're wondering how I'm going to fit them into the team with the ratings being lower than everybody else, well, this is how I'm going to. I'm going to learn out pretty much all of our top players just to make sure that those guys get a chance in the team. And if it doesn't work, these guys can come back a better player anyway. And I'm also cutting Tino and Juren's time at Portsmouth a little bit short just to ensure Alex Robertson gets the game time he needs. I do apologise, Portsmouth fans. I'm just thinking of the future. But here is how the team looks going into season one with the new 4-3-3 attacking variation purely because we got two centre midfielders. Otherwise, we would have stuck with the 4-2-3-1. Now, at the time of recording this, Portsmouth in real life are actually top of the league so it's going to be very interesting to see how this team fares against the team in real life. And it looks like they fared just fine. We've actually won at League One ourselves by six points in the end as well so we've done our part guys. In real life Portsmouth it's over to you. But we got knocked out in round two of the FA Cup by Stockport. I mean honestly am I ever going to do well in the FA Cup? And we also got knocked out in round one of the Carabao Cup. Great stuff Portsmouth. And in our one and only shot to win the Bristol Street Motors Trophy, we got knocked out in the semi. But do you know what? Considering how badly we normally do in this, I will definitely take that. And I will also take this. Just look at the improvement in this team. That is actually ridiculous. I expected improvement, but not on this level. I mean, for God's sake, Kamara has gone up by eight. Robertson's gone up by six. Poole's gone up by three. And Paddy Lane has gone up by seven. Guys, we have done a madness this year. And guys, our front three defo know how to score goals. They all got at least 20 goal contributions this season, man. That is ridiculous. And shout out to Robertson who got 10 assists in total. I mean, he didn't get as many goals as I wanted him to, but you know what? There's still plenty of time for him to get that into his game. But as far as I'm concerned, the easiest part of this video is done getting Portsmouth out of League One and into the Championship. But with that being said, we definitely do need a goalkeeper to go into the Championship with Macy is only 70 rated. I feel like whilst he has improved quite a lot this year, he'd get his backside handed to him in the Championship. 
yet. I don't think that's the only thing I'm going to do. I'll take a further look at this team once we've sorted that out. But one thing is definitely for certain, Portsmouth is going to have a very interesting season too. But before we go into season two, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you leave it a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. We are now officially on the road to 100,000 subscribers. Now, ladies and gents, I said I wanted a better goalkeeper and I think I found one. 22-year-old Deont Ramaj from Ajax. He's 73 overall. He's three ratings higher than our current keeper. This just makes all the sense in the world to me. But guys, he was definitely expensive to bring into the team, costing us 5.8 million. He's legit taking half of our budget, man. We've got 6 million left from an original 12 million. We've got to be pretty smart with the remainder of the signings we intend on making. Now, as for what positions those signings are going to be, I want a better centre back than McIntyre and a better centre midfielder than Lowry. I mean, when you look at the team, guys, it does kind of make sense. They're the weakest links in the team, and once we sort these positions out, we may just get a top 10 finish. And starting with the centre back, I've gone for Nathan Wood from Swansea City. He's only 22, he's already 70 overall, and he didn't cost us that much at all. Only 3 million to sign on a four year deal. And that leaves us with 3 million in our budget, and that might just be enough to bring in the centre mid I want. And believe me, I'm thinking of the future with this guy. Of course, I'm talking about Joe Ballingman, guys. He's 18, he's 69 overall. He's worth between 3.5 and, and 2.8 million, so we may have have to give them a player in order to make this work. Now I'm giving them a million alongside Joe Morell. He's a CDM and we're not using him because our formation is the 4-3-3 so this kind of just makes sense to me. If they go for this that would be amazing. 2% silent clause sorted. Joe Ballingham is one step closer to becoming a Portsmouth player. Get in. And just like that for 1 million combined with Joe Morell we've made Ballingham a Pompey player. Which leaves the team looking like this heading into our first season back into the championship with Pompey and honestly guys I've got a very very good feeling about what we can do this year. We're not going to be the whipping boys. I reckon we're going to be the dark horse this time. And guys, I was more than right. I was bang on. We are eighth in the championship in our first season in it, and we weren't far off the playoffs in the slightest. And for those of you thinking Joe Ballingham made the wrong move joining a newly promoted side instead of staying at Sunderland, while well, Sunderland are heading straight back down to where we came from, so I reckon he made the right choice, you know. For another news, in the FA Cup, we made it to round four this time before getting annihilated by Chelsea. You know what? Well, I'll definitely tell you that Chelsea are a top team even if they're not playing like it in real life right now. And we've been done dirty once again guys. Round 2 we faced Crystal Palace and unfortunately they knocked us out as well. But guys I'm looking at this team right now and I'm feeling like we're only a couple of really solid signings away from making this team go from the championship to the Premier League. And in fairness guys the stats aren't that bad. Kamara with 21 and 5, 13 and 4 for Paddy Lane and 10 goals for Christian Sadie. I'm hoping that this guy doesn't fall off next year man. I really want him to become a hidden gem. Now for next season, I'm thinking a couple of better centre-backs and maybe a centre midfielder in place of mocks on. Once we sort these positions out, I see absolutely no reason why we can't go from 8th in the league to the playoffs and maybe even automatic promotion. So we are going to start season 3 by bringing in a brand new right back, Lazarus Rotter from AG Athens. He's 27, 75 overall and his contract was running out meaning we got a very good deal for him. 3.75 million to be exact. And that leaves us with 7 million from the original 12 to bring in a centre midfielder and a fullback and I know just the centre midfielder to go for. Vuta Berger is the player I'm going for. He's only 24 he's 75 rated. He's 6 foot 3 as well. This guy's an absolute monster and to be fair my dad really rates this guy so dad this one's for you. But guys I may live to regret this as he was very expensive. 7 million on the dot it cost to bring him to Portsmouth. And now we've got 866k to bring in a fullback. Luckily though there is the free agency so hopefully that can deliver for us and i'm happy to say you guys it absolutely has carlos never he's 29 he's 75 rated we'll probably get only two seasons out of him but when he costs absolutely nothing we really can't complain at that and so the team looks like this going into our second and hopefully our last season in the championship now last year we were this close to getting into the playoffs itself but this year that's the minimum expectation i'm setting out i want automatic promotion if i'm being completely honest with you lot and guys that's exactly what we've got we are second in the championship we have once again got Portsmouth back into the top flight of English football and we were only one point away from getting 100 points as well man we've had a pretty good year you know but we once again get knocked out in round four of the FA Cup this time by Manchester City and we meet round four of the FA Cup this time losing to West Ham can we stop getting drawn against Premier League sides man this just isn't fair but guys I'm looking at this team now and obviously there's still a lot of players with a lot of potential that we've got to leave alone for a bit but these other players 
players in this team that definitely need replacing. Otherwise, we're going to get our backsides added to us in the prep. And the stats are, as you'd expect, guys. 25-1 and one for Sadie, 19-17 and 17 for Kamara, and 17-8 and eight for Paddy Lane. Well, guys, it's taken us three seasons, but we've done it. We've taken Pompey from League One all the way to the Premier League. But like I've already said, we've got a lot of work to do to make sure that we stay there, man. Because this team, as it is, definitely will not survive. But guys, it's the dawn of the new season and it's official. Portsmouth are now back in the Premier League. And we've also got that promotion money to come with it. 55 million to be exact. We can definitely help Portsmouth survive with this kind of money. Now, I feel like the midfield up in this team is absolutely fine. Our wingers, strikers, central attacker, midfielders and centre mids are all good to go. And we don't need to do anything with them. But the same can't be said for our 74 rated centre back and 75 rated right back. I mean granted Rota hasn't been at the club all that long but that really doesn't matter guys. He's a weak link and we need to sort him out and the same exact principle goes for Pool as well. The beauty of having a lot of money though, we don't have to replace average players with average players. We can actually bring in quality players now and I know just who to bring in. The first one being Lucas Baraldo from PSG. Now I've never seen this guy before but he's only 22, he's 79 overall He's definitely within our budget as well. I reckon we take a gamble on this guy and see what he can do. And following him is Felipe Terraciano from Wolfsburg. He's 23, 80 rated already. And once again, I haven't heard of this guy either, but I'm willing to take a gamble on both of these guys just to see what they can do. And guys, we just about managed to sign both of these guys for 50 million combined, but that is officially our transfer window done. I mean, they may have cost 50 million for the transfer fee, but their contracts were extortion. We've literally got less than 200k left in our budget. Like I said, guys, the transfer window's done. Now, I'm going to be honest, guys. I don't feel like I've done enough in that transfer window. Terraciano and Beraldo are fantastic additions, but I just don't think we're going to be strong enough to survive the Prem. I mean, we're not playing against teams like Bristol City or Stoke City anymore. We're playing against teams like Manchester City, man. I genuinely don't feel like we're strong enough to survive, but here's hoping I'm very mistaken. Guys, I'll be real. I'm gobsmacked. We are eighth in the Premier League in our first season back in the top flight of English football with Pompey. I mean, how the hell have we done that? I was absolutely convinced we were going to get relegated, but you know what? I am happily mistaken. We even made it to round five of the FA Cup, only losing to Bournemouth on penalties. And we made it to the semis of the Carabao Cup before we got admittedly slaughtered by Arsenal, but semi-finals of the Carabao Cup, boys, we have had a crazy campaign. But looking at the team, I think there's three reasons why we've done so well. Ramaj, who's now 83 rated, Beraldo, who's now 83 rated as well, and obviously Kamara, who's now 88 rated. I mean, what can we say to that? I think budget depending next year, we may have to sell Kamara. I mean, he's worth just under 120 million. Do you realize what we could do with that money? Never mind top eight, we could get into the top four. But he definitely would be missed because he's our top goal scorer and assister with 21 goals and 11 assists, man. We definitely need to find a suitable replacement if we do end up selling him. But one thing's for certain, this Pompey team really isn't to be taken lightly. Literally, we only finished below the top teams in the Premier League. Everybody else was below us. But next year is going to be interesting because it's going to tell us whether this season was a one-hit wonder or whether we've got enough quality in our team to not only do this every season from now on, but to do even better. But we are starting the new season with really bad news. We've only got 44 million to spend, so honestly I feel like the smartest thing to do is to actually sell Kamara. This stings though, man. He's 89 overall now because I accidentally simmed a couple of days into this new season. He's worth 130 38.5 million now. Guys, we've got no choice. We've got to cash in on him. And it took just over a week, but Juve have offered 182.9 million, but that's not the best part. We can get upwards to 229 million if we get this negotiation right, meaning if we sell Kamara, our entire team pretty much can get a massive improvement. So with that being said, let's go big and bold. 220 million is the counter offer. If they actually go for this, I'm going to be, oh yeah, okay, fair enough. They have upped it a bit, but I didn't expect them to accept that first time. Okay, let's go for 218 million instead. I cannot believe it. They've actually just accepted 218 million. I'm going to miss Kamara, but I'm definitely going to be happy to see all that money we can spend now. And there he goes, guys. Off to Juve for a whopping 200 odd million. The best part about this, guys, he's going to Italy. We're not going to have to face him anytime soon in the Premier League. And that leaves us with just under quarter of a billion to spend on this team. You better believe this transfer winner is going to be the big
easiest one yet for us. And just by looking at the team, you already know where's getting improved. We need a centre back, we need a new full back, a couple of centre midfielders, and of course, a replacement winger for Kamara. So that's five new players we're bringing into this team, which works out at around 50 million per signing. Yeah, you better believe we are going for top four football this season. So let's stop this transfer winner from back to front. I'm going for centre back Jacob Hansen from United. He's only 5 foot 11, granted, but he's 22, 83 overall, not too expensive. I'm definitely bringing him into the team. And following him is Federico Di Marco from Inter Milan. He's 29, 85 rated. We all saw what an absolute beast this guy turned into in the Inter takeover, and that is exactly why I'm bringing him to Portsmouth as well. And just like that, for the total amount of 89 and a half million, we've signed both of these players, completing our defensive lineup. But we're not done yet, guys. Conor Gallagher is joining us from Chelsea. He's 27, 83 overall. We need that box-to-box -box midfielder with a lot of stamina, and he is absolutely perfect for the job. And for 36 million on the dot, he's the latest addition to the team. And joining Gallagher in the midfield is Javi Guerri. He's only 24 himself, 84 rated. He's six foot two. This guy's a brick wall. And for 43 million, we have successfully signed him on a four-year deal. And just look at the team after those signings, guys. The bat full is really really good now and so does the midfield we just need to try and find somebody for Kamara and we've still got quite a bit of money left to do this 60 million to be exact now I'm not stupid we're not going to find anybody on Kamara's level but we can certainly bring in somebody pretty damn good and ladies and gents I found a pretty suitable replacement Pedro Gonchares from Bayern he's 85 overall 29 years old he's definitely not on Kamara's level but he's definitely good enough to replace him and just like that guys our transfer window is over as we've just spent 50 1.7 million on Pedro Conchavez. But I just want to show you guys something. I don't remember Abu Kamara being 95 overall when I sold him, man. I feel like we've been absolutely mugged off. We could have got like 300 million for this guy. Instead, we only settled for 200 odd. But you know what? Let's move on from that. The team going into season five looks absolutely insane all over the pitch. And that is only thanks to the sale of Kamara. Now, last year, we were only three points outside of the top six. And already, we've had a pretty decent start. So here's a we can keep this going until the very end of the season and get ourselves European football once again with Pompey. And that's exactly what we've done. We are third in the Premier League Champions League football. We're coming after you lot next year. And actually, looking at the table, we were only two points away from winning the entire damn thing. I'm telling you now, guys, we're going to win the Premier League title before the end of this video. Well, that got me curious about how my mate Kamara did, and they only finished inside the top four, man. Honestly, like, how the hell are you Uvain not winning the league with Kamara? Well, they probably did better domestically than us because Blackpool knocked us out to the FA Cup in round five. Blackpool knocked us out. Let that just sink in for a sec. And we made the final of the Carabao Cup. United just beat us 3-2, man. We were so close to domestic glory. But ladies and gents, just look at this team. Now, I'm telling you now, the signings that we made, every single one of them was a massive W and this just proves it. And even though we sold our best player, Kamara, our front three really stepped up. Paddy Lane got 24 goal contributions, 30 for Gonchavez and 17-1 for Sadie. But next year will be our first time in the Champions League with Portsmouth under my management. And I don't know about you guys, but I want to make a bloody big statement whilst we're in that competition. And to do that, I don't necessarily think that anything needs to change in the starting 11. I'm looking a bit more towards the bench. I mean, for starters, I've literally just realised we haven't even got a second choice goalkeeper. So that is definitely going to have to be rectified this year. And to be fair, bringing in better players for the bench than the ones we've already got there definitely isn't exactly a bad idea but you never know with the budget we may have we may make changes to the starting 11 but before we do anything we're bringing in a second choice goalkeeper that's where franco israel from nantes comes in he's six foot three 28 years old 80 rated he'll definitely do the job as a second choice keeper and just like that for only 14 million we've solved our goalkeeper problem and that signing hasn't even dented our budget we've got 132 million remaining from the original 149 million we can sort that bench out and then some now i'd like a better second choice fullback and I think Bafodi Diakite is absolutely perfect. He's only 27 years old and he's 82 overall. And following him is centre back Adrilson from Brighton. He's 30 years old, 82 overall. If anything happens to any of our fullbacks or centre backs, either one of these players can jump in and fill that role and then some. And just like that, for 51 and a half million, we've signed a backup centre back and a backup fullback. And guys, this bench is looking pretty damn decent now. I think it's just missing a central attacking midfielder 
and a strike, you know. And we've still got half of the original budget, guys. 72 million to spend on two players. I feel like we're going to do just fine in bringing them into the team. Now, starting with the backup striker, I'm going for 81 rated Emmanuel Imegu. He's only 25 and he's 6 foot 5. This guy is an absolute monster. But the cam I'm bringing in is going into the start in 11. Artem Bondarenko. He's 27, 84 rated. I mean, he's two ratings higher than Robertson, man. This is just a no brainer. And that, ladies and gents, is our transfer window done as we've just spent 67 million on these two players. But guys, moving on from that, we've been placed into Group G of the Champions League alongside Inter Milan, Obi Salzburg and Bromby IF. And I feel like this is a very easy group to get out of. Well, that's just speculation from me. These guys need to play the football on the pitch to actually make it happen. And honestly, guys, some of the players have already improved. We've only simulated a couple of weeks into their season. And judging by the early results, we're already off to a good start. So here's hoping we can keep this going once again until the very end of their season. We may actually pull off an upset in the Champions League. You never know. Well, it's safe to say in the Prem, we delivered once again. We are top four in the Prem. 11 points behind Manchester City. Grant, honestly, guys, you have to have such a perfect season to either compete with them. I mean, they literally lost four games all season. How do you even do that in this day and age? But there is one positive. We finally won the FA Cup at long last, guys. That's our first trophy since season bloody one. Made that trophy number two because we've actually won the Carabao Cup, beating Man City to do it as well. Get in! I'm telling you now, guys, if we've done as well in the Champions League as we've done domestically, we're looking at a Champions League final. And it may just happen, you know, after a very close group stage, we just about make it through to the round of 16. But unfortunately, Napoli makes short work of us. 4-2 on aggregate. Jesus Christ. Come on, we've got to be doing better than that. Okay, we've definitely got to do better than that. Have you seen how good this team looks? How the hell did we lose to Napoli with all due respect? I mean, granted, they've got Kofora to Skilly, they've got Victor Ozyman, but who else have they actually got realistically? I mean, their best goalkeeper is 83 rated for goodness sake. You couldn't tell me our front three couldn't bang goals so front and century against this guy. Come on, FC24. Give me a break. I mean, look at the stats for goodness sake, man. Our front three alone got over 60 goal contributions between them. That's outrageous. Maybe next year I have got to be a bit more ruthless with the signings. For the most part, this season I've focused on the bench, but maybe I've got to focus on the start in 11. I mean, is Sadie the weak link? He's only got 16 goals this season in 53 games, man. Our wingers are getting more than him. Surely it should be the other way around. Maybe this is the route we've got to go down, but before I get any bright ideas on who I want to sign, we've got to feel look at next season's budget. The tricky part is, guys, out of these three strikers that I've chosen, who the hell am I going to bring in? I mean, you've got Dusan Vlavic, who's 88 overall, and he's not even 30 years old yet. You've also got Ozyman, who's three ratings higher than Vlavic, but he is one year older. And you've also got Erling Holland, who's three ratings higher than Ozyman, and he's younger than him, but he costs way more. Actually, looking at it, he's way out of our budget. So with that being said, it looks like Ozyman is coming over to Portsmouth. It's ironic, isn't it? Napoli not Ports without the Champions League next year, but he's about to join us this season. But guys, I guess money really does talk us fit. 162.2 million Victor Ozyman has officially made his move to Portsmouth. And yes, we do have 43 million still to spend, but realistically, we don't really need to spend it on anybody else, so I'm calling the transfer window there. Now, we are obviously once again in the Champions League in Group D alongside LASK, Olympic Lyon, and ironically enough, Victor Ozyman's former club, Napoli. But with the team looking this damn good going into season 7. I'll be real with you lot. I'll be very surprised if we don't win multiple trophies this year. And guys, we've finally done it. We have won Portsmouth, the Premier League title. We have finally toppled Manchester City. Get in! And we've also battered them to win the Community Shield, so that's the double secure straight away. But in the FA Cup, we got knocked out by Southampton in the quarters. That's poor from us, man. We've got to be battering them. And we got knocked out to the semis of the Cowboy Cup by Bristol City. Bristol City knocked us out of the car, but oh, come on, Portsmouth, man, really? But in the Champions League, it's a different story. We topped Group D very easily, sending Napoli to the Europa League in the process. Oh, I bet Ozyman's so happy he left them to join us. And in the round of 16, we absolutely dismantled PSV. And we did the exact same to Union Berlin in the quarters. God, we've had an easy run so far, haven't we? But we could be playing against Dortmund, Liverpool, or Man City. Honestly, give me City and let us batter him. We actually 
actually drew against Man City and beat them 3-2. We are playing Dortmund in the Champions League final. Get in. I don't know what I'm saying get in for. I've just realized Dortmund are a sick team on FC24. But Pedro Conchavez take a bow, lad. 60 goal contributions in 61 games. That is beyond ridiculous. But what isn't ridiculous is 17 goals and one assist for Aussie men in 51 games. I literally spent over 150 million on you and that's what you do? I may as well have just stuck with our old striker. But regardless of that, this is our Portsmouth lineup for the Champions League final against Dortmund. And I've got to say, guys, I'm really happy about this for one really good reason. We have somehow kept the lane from season one all the way to the Champions League final. We may not win it, but I can happily say I brought an OG to the Champions League final. Get in. And throughout the last seven years with Portsmouth, we've won a lot with them. We've won the League One title, the Premier League title, the Carabao Cup, and the Community Shield. But we've now got the chance to add one more trophy to that cabinet and it just so happens to be the biggest one you can win at club level the champions league here come dortmund on the left hand side inside to brand they've got kirkes on the ball now they're working the ball around really nice oh no they found barno get in great bit of tackling from our defense we've got paddy lane on the ball now the og portsmouth player can aussie men find him yes he can oh that's a beautiful ball lane is through oh i'll tell you what let's dink him let's dink oh my god oh why didn't i just hit it normally good when you're such a moron sometimes here comes Dortmund on the right. Cristiano is on the ball. He's found Xerxes in the box. He is absolutely massive, isn't he? Xerxes, Jesus. Wondarenko is on the ball now, though. We're going to go around. We've got to Gallagher again. I'll tell you what, let's go for a Travella shot from... That is just beyond... What is that? Chavez is on the ball now. The 60-goal contributor man. Oh, he's maybe going to go 61, can we? Yes, he can. It's... What a bloody finish. Pedro con Chavez. I can't believe he actually got the shot off. Beautiful assist from Aussie men in fairness. Pedro Gonchovas, I thought the first touch was a little bit too heavy, but he got there before the keeper, and that makes it 1-0. But Dormant are just too good of a team to... Oh, no, Bano Gittins is in... Oh, there's nope. no way. Oh, what a save from our goalkeeper. He's another one from season one as well, if I'm not mistaken. Might have been season two thinking about it, but we have to defend this corner now. Great defending, lads. Keep it going. Well, here come Dortmund. Cristiano is on the ball on the right-hand side. Second off, very early in the second off, may I add. So a goalie will be crucial for Dortmund getting back into the game. Good block. Another corner for Dortmund. Can we collect it easily? Can we get rid of it? It's away, but not as far away as I'd like. Oh, no, Zixi, man. Oh, come on. We've got to be defending better than that. We can't let Zixi have that much space. Not the start to the second half we were after, to say the least, man. We need to book our ideas up and get another goal. We've got Aussie men on the ball. He's done absolutely nothing in this game so far, but he could change that right now. He's got so much pace. Oh, my God. Look at him go. He could make this two. Oh, my days. With a better shot, it might have been 2-1, but no, it still remains one all. Pedro Gonchavez is on the ball. One last opportunity to get the win here. Okay, Aussie man, I see you in space. Come on, 160-odd million, man. Make it worth the money. Come on, win us the Champions League final. Oh, come on, Aussie men. One last chance before the final whistle in this game. And it does. Hang on, hang on. Gallagher's on the outside. Come on, make this count. Oh, come on, man. Is that the full time whistle? Hang on a minute. We've got a frigging corner to take. How dare you, ref? I'm going to be real. Aussie men is knackered. So I'm bringing in Sadie, man. Honestly, Aussie men, not a 92 rated player. It just doesn't feel like one. Terraciano is on the bullies. Found Paddy Lane. Oh, what a touch. Paddy Lane could make it. 2-1 here, please. Paddy Lane. Oh, what a save. Hang on, what's that? What's that? Is that a penalty? What was that for? A handball or something? I'm pretty sure that doesn't apply to the goalkeeper. What the hell happened here? Did he handball it on the line? Did he pull a Luis Suarez? What? Oh my God, he pulled a Luis Suarez, you cheating scumbag. It's the substitute, Sadie, to step up to the mark. Top left bins. Come on, top left Denied. bins, you absolute fraud, man. What do we have to do to score a second? Paddy Lane, come on, good delivery. Beautiful. Head on that. Come on. Any oh, my God. What a save. Dortmund, stop it. We've got DiMarco on the ball. He's found Guerra. Guerra has found Gallagher. That's a good turn, Gallagher. Can you get around the defense? Tight angle shot. Can we make it count? No, we can't. Okay, Shaparenko is coming off Robertson. And I'm putting Ballingame in place of Guerra. Last chance. Last 15. Come on, boys. Paddy Lane's through. Paddy Lane is through. Cut inside. Beautiful. On his left foot. Oh, um, Paddy Lane. I'm pretty sure he's left footed. I may have just butchered that because I think his foot's left footy, but it may be he's right. I don't know. You've got to be doing better than that there. 
there. Here come Dortmund though. Kareem Adeyemi is on the ball. Is he against Terraciano? Is he going to get past him? I hope not because if he does, that is really bad news. He's got past him. Oh, no, 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 no. Great block. Great defending. Corner kick to Dortmund. Can we clear this ball? Come on. Yes, that should be easy to clear. Okay, last time this happened, we conceded. Get the ball away. Get the ball away. Please. Thank God for that. Oh, my God. And that is all she wrote. 120 minutes. We are one all apiece. We go to penalties. For God's sake. We've already missed one penalty in this game. I don't want to miss a second. Gonchavez, put it away, lad. Bottom left. Oh, my days. Thank God for that. Zixi is going to go bottom right. He went top left. Sadie, you missed one penalty. We're going to go straight down the middle. Don't miss the second, good lad. Okay, he's redeemed himself. Gretchy is going to go top left. Nope. Oh, my God. I went bottom left bins instead of top left. Get in. DeMarco, you're not good at penalties, but what you can do is slot it straight down the middle once again. Come on, 3-1. Ruiz, you're going top right bins. No, you're not. It's okay. okay. Teresiano, we are not going down the middle this time. We're going bottom left. Boys, I don't know how he's gone bottom left twice and we've beaten him twice. If we save this, it's game over. Adiemi, you ain't got it in your latch, you ain't got the minerals. Top right bins, and we freaking done it! Oh my god, we have won Portsmouth, the Champions League final, in the most dramatic fashion possible. 4 2 on penalties, he ends. We have made Portsmouth the best team in the world, and it's not even freaking close by the end of this season. We started this journey with Portsmouth as fallen giants. It's safe to say now their status ain't fallen anymore. They're giants once again. Now, guys, this video is done and dusted, but don't worry. Just click right here to watch this one.